No sé. Best thing about first practice is seeing all y'all. <laughs> so, see y'all, would it be like this again after the spring game, probably? No? Everybody ready? All right. Uh, you want me to get up here and say what every coach does? It was great to be back out there today. It was the first day out. You know, everybody had good energy. No, um, no it was. Uh, uh, yeah, Mike, no problem. No issue. Andrew's just not doing his job, is he? No, so it, it, uh, obviously it's the first day back out. Uh, having spring practice, and it's always great to get back out there, uh, get out of the office. And you know, things have changed a little bit than they were several years ago because you have so much, you, know, you have that extended time with them in, in, in the month of February when we get off the road. So there's a little bit of a, uh, uh, there's a, some, some they, they know what to do. You know, the, the players, they have a little bit more experience as far as uh, with installation and with those things. Uh, but, you know, the whole thing is really how to practice. And, and, you know, we got 25 newcomers out there, 25 new guys, uh, I think 15 of them freshmen, uh, 10 transfers. <clears> that today was their first day going through uh, practice the way we practice, going through the structure of it, you know, and really the expectations of it. Um, and, and the whole part of spring ball is we, we, we want the players to be able to feel the reward of improvement. We want them to be able to go out there and improve every day, get better every day, but also feel the reward for it, not feel anxious and get up tight and stressed out. Uh, about having to go to practice, you know, practices are hard, and you know they're meant to be hard, and that's that's how you build a uh, build a football team is going through you know challenging situations and, and tough practices. I mean, we're we're not in pads yet, so they'll continue to get harder and harder. But we want the guys to also feel the reward for going out and in, in, in practice and, and seeing the improvement that they make each day. Um, you know, really the thing that we're preaching to them right now is that the you know having the right mindset coming out to practice of, of you know the, the, the attitude and the toughness that we. Uh, practice with, we play with, uh, the frame of mind that we come out to the field with, that's more important than anything else right now. Uh, getting the guys to understand how to uh, how to run to the football, how to pursue on defense. Uh, from the start of practice, it should look the same at the end of practice. Um, you know, how to run to the ball on offense, how to secure a catch, you know, make a tight turn, get north and south. Uh, you know, basic fundamentals at the lines of scrimmage. Um, you know, and really it all comes back to the the, the, the attitude that they have coming out, the toughness they play with, uh, and being able to challenge these guys with, with installation. Um, but at the same time, the, the most important things right now are the, are the basic fundamentals of the game and, uh, and, and, and the mindset they come out with. So uh, exciting to be back out there, exciting to see a lot of the new faces, uh, excited to see some, uh, a lot of the new coaches out there, uh, first time with, you know, on the field in a practice. So all in all, it was a, it, it was a good start for us uh, with a lot of new things going on. But at the same time, we got a long way to go. Uh, you know, the expectation that we have as coaches and that I have as the head coach, uh, you know, we're not close to being there yet. Uh, we got 15 days to to get better this spring, um, leading into the summer. So we got to take advantage of each one of them. Okay. Questions? I wanted to ask about your uh, new coaches. Obviously, you've been in some situations where there's been turnover. Working for Coach Saban, you you saw that a lot there, where guys just moved up and moved around. How do you? How did you put the together your defensive staff and and kind of what do you can you maybe tell us a little bit about each guy you added? Yeah, so uh, you know when I made the decision to to you know, make make some adjustments and changes on that side of the football, uh, you know, talked to a lot of people, uh, you know, talked to a lot of people in reference of guys, talked to a lot of people uh, as far as interviews go. Uh, wanted to make sure that, that, that we got this right. Uh, you know, I, I think the offensive staff really set, set a bar high as far as uh, – and look, I'm not talking about the outcome on the, on the field on game day. That's, that's inevitably what, a, what, a good, what the outcome becomes when you when put a good staff together. Um, but just the way that, uh, you know, the Buster goes about the, you know, managing the, other, the, the people in the room, putting things together, the organization. Uh, the the detail that's coached, the progression, the teaching progression, all of those things, and then the way that that room really fits together. Uh, so that was really the standard that we we're looking at, and uh, it's you know you go through the process of of, of talking to people for for different spots, and uh, you know really lucky to to be able to hire Tyler uh, as the defensive coordinator. Uh, it was actually the, he was the very first person I talked to in, in all of it, and you know fast forward, 
you know, was it five, you know, four, five, six weeks uh, later, ends up being the guy that we're fortunate enough to be able to get. Uh, you know, he's wise a lot, you know, wise past his years. Uh, you know, you forget a lot of times that, well, what his age actually is, especially when you, and you see him, the energy he coaches with, but the detail he coaches with, the, the toughness that he coaches with. He's been around uh, really good coaches in his career, and, and, and you know, I think the, the outstanding thing about him when you look at what he's been able to do and you know what he was what he did at the last place he was at was uh, he, he had a group of guys that really played uh, they, they played cohesive they played together uh, yeah they were good statistically but that's only you know that's because of the way that you could tell that they were coached and that the uh, the expectation and the demands to the expectation that they had on that side of the football so excited to get him and uh, uh, you know Jess is a guy that I've known a long time uh, you know he, he's as respected as uh, anyone there is out there is a defensive line coach. Uh, but what people probably don't know about him is just the relationships that he's able to have with those guys, the, the players in the room. And when you have those relationships, you're able to push them and able to do a lot, a lot of things with them. Uh, and really push him out of their comfort zones. And, and I thought that's what we needed. Uh, but he's also a very detailed coach. He's very uh, technique driven um, to be, be strong technicians. He's coached at every level and had success at every level he's coached. So, um, you know, excited with him. Then, then you know, Kyle, uh, Kyle Pope was somebody that uh, he was a graduate assistant uh, in, in, in Tuscaloosa with us. And, you know, just the, the energy that he had at, at a young age then. Um, you know, energy as a as a coach on the field, as a recruiter, uh, you know, the, the relationships he had with those guys over there at that time. Uh, and, and again, the the way he goes about uh, every day, the the recruiting part of it is is is, is huge, as we all know. Um, he had proven then to be a very successful recruiter. Uh, then goes on and you know works at a couple of different places and. and and proved that you know what he was doing as a GA you know six seven years ago, uh, you know was able to develop that and become an even better coach and uh, really excited you know having him and uh, you know working with the ends and the outside backers if we uh, you know go into a uh, a three four type mold um, but you know him and Jess working together a really good pairing really good pairing um, feed off each other and. Uh, really expect big things out of those two guys, and in, 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 you know how our guys are coached and how they uh, and how they play. Um, you know, as far as <clears throat> on the defensive backfield, you know Corey, who was right down the road, again another one who was one of the first people I talked to at, at that position, uh, and you know the the relationships that he had with people in the area. You know, when you talk to people, whether it be uh, local high school coaches, um, former players that he's coached, uh, you know everything was. It was super positive uh, when, when it comes to, to Corey and, and what he was able to do with a lot of the guys that he brought into the last place he was at, uh, the relationships he had with high school coaches in the area, which I thought was a very important thing for us to address uh, uh, with that hire. And uh, then Ricky, who's been here for a year already, you know, coaching special teams, um, adding the corners with him. Uh, again, it allows him to be able to affect uh, a, a, a different in a different way, another position group, and be able to use his recruiting skills uh, even more than we were able to last year. Um, that and then uh, uh, I think the last one's Trent. Uh, Trent, who we hired uh, really two weeks ago, I believe. Um, you know, be able to see him out there for the first time, really, with those guys, and uh, it'll be exciting to watch him as well. But you know, again, it goes back to you know the people you talk to in the process uh, of uh, of hiring guys. You don't just talk to that person. You know, once you kind of narrow it down, and you get to the, you know, two or three people you're looking at. You know, and then you start to talk to, you know, people they've worked with, people they've worked for, you know, uh, high schools where they've where they've recruited in the past, and just really to vet them out. And I'm excited about the guys we're able to bring on. Um, excited about those guys out there on the field today, and I'm excited what they'll be able to do with their position groups. Yeah, but that that ended at the end of the end of the bowl game. I mean, now it's over. I mean, there's this is a totally new team. Um, success is not continuous. Uh, momentum is not continuous. I mean, if, if our guys didn't learn anything, I mean, look at the first game of the year last year. I mean, we had momentum in that game, and it stopped. And that's what happens. Momentum stops. Momentum comes in waves. Uh, you know, a continuation of building a program, a continuation of building a football team the right way, and those guys believing in. Uh, 
believing in what you're giving them, believing in what you're coaching and, and teaching them, uh, you know, having a standard that they that they strive to get to every single day. Um, does that help when you have success? Yeah, it helps. All right, but a lot of those guys from that team are gone. Uh, there's, like I said, there's 25 new guys out there today that have, you know, don't have any, have zero history with, with Georgia Tech football. So, um, you know, it's, it's a it's a rebuild every year when you look at it like that. Um, you know, you, you can you, know, you you learn from what you've done. You know, you learn from the things that were done well in the past, the things that weren't done well, and, and, and what the outcome ends up being. You know, yeah, you learn to. You know, if you get in a hole, you you can't you know fold the tent. You got to you know continue to fight and scratch and claw. And yeah, you use those as references. But as far as a continuation, I, I don't I don't I don't believe in that. I believe in that each team is uh, is built new each year. Um, otherwise, I mean, every team would win the same amount of games every year. So, uh, you know, this is this is a constant process that, that that we're in the midst of, and we want to continue to take the, the steps forward and, and not backwards in that. You talked about trying coming in to coach the receivers, and he's he's uh, you know was a coordinator elsewhere. Do you, are you looking at to, to him for some offensive ideas uh, with that group or as a whole? You know the I'm offense. Looking for him to coach the receivers at a high level, develop the receivers, uh, and to be able to recruit his, his area and his position at a high level as well. Um, that's what I expect out of every position coach. You know, we, we talk about it every day in staff meeting. We talked about it with the team before practice today. Everyone is responsible for doing their job, right? If everyone will just do their job right, and worry about being the best they can possibly be at doing what they're supposed to do, right, then we have a chance to have a really good staff and a really good football team, right? But when people start worrying about doing other jobs, people start worrying about looking around and, and, and you know, what I need to do over here, what I need to do over there, and you look at them and you're like, well, then all of a sudden their position group's the worst position group on the field or, you know, the, the, the lack of detail that comes with them. You know, just do your job. That, that's, that's the key. That's what we want. That's what I really demand out of the coaches and the players each and every day. And, and you know, it sounds – it's easy to say, but that's one of the hardest things in the world to do is, you know, I think the old saying was stay in your lane. I mean, um, you know, we've, got, we've got a lot of really good ideas um, and smart people on the offensive side of the football. Uh, and collectively, everyone has a part in the game plan each week. But I'm not worried about any game plan right now. I'm just worried about those guys being able to, uh, you know, each person, each coach being able to develop their position group uh, as, as best possible. Coach Jackson. Uh, coach, how has Leo Blackburn been progressing from his injury and everything? Yeah, I mean, what was it? How many months ago was that? Was that 10, 11? And he's back. He was full speed, full go. I like that hat. That's cool. I think the little thing on top is what makes it the best. <laughs> no, uh, it, it, you know, I, I was down at 101s uh, today with the O-line, D-line, and turned around one time and saw saw Leo uh, with a nice catch across the middle. And I just looked up and said, wow, man, it's good to see. Trust uh, Brent, you've said from your very first press conference uh, a couple buildings down that your goal was to build this into a championship program. How close do you feel this team is to, to reach in that top of the mountain? And what are the things that, that still need to be accomplished on, on the way to that goal? Yeah, well. <laughs> I could care less about tomorrow. I'm worried about doing the best job we can do today to build this football team to be the best team they can be today. All right? if, when you start worrying about the outcome and you're not process driven and you're not process oriented in everything you go about, then, then you got zero chance. I mean, to have a championship, to have a championship mindset, right? Yeah, we talk about that all the time. We talk about having a championship mindset. Well, that means be doing the best you possibly can every single day, regardless of how you feel. All right, having the right attitude every single day, regardless of how you feel. Coming out and playing the game the right way, regardless of how you feel. Ability to affect others on the field and, and, and have those guys rise up and uh, play to the expectation each and every day. All right, but look, I, I was I was fortunate enough to be part of one of the greatest runs in, in college football in, in my time uh, working for Coach Saban. And not one time did he talk about a championship. Not one time did he talk about what we're going to do or win. Right? That just doesn't happen. The people that talk in, that, in those terms and they're focused on, on the outcome of things, right? you're not going to get what you want. Right? We're worried about each and every day being the best team we can possibly be, uh, improving every single day and playing the game the right way. I wanted to ask you about 
um, Sylvain, just kind of how he's coming along with his rehab, and then also Keelan, who you brought in, um, kind of what his status is for the spring. Yeah, so we, uh, you, know, you know, pretty healthy right now. Actually, really healthy going into spring. Um, Sylvain is, uh, he looks like, a, he looks like a statue out there. I mean, he, the way he's built, and you know, seeing him run around, and I mean. You see, you see how how well he's moving and doing things. You're like, man, I wish I could get him out there. But you know, we're not going to rush anything with anybody when it comes to those uh, those things. Um, and then, so he'll, I mean, he won't be around in the spring, but he'll be or he won't be practicing in the spring. But he's well on course to be uh, full go when, when, when summer camp gets here. I think Keelan had the unfortunate when he had the car accident, um, you know, the unfortunate injury there. And uh, you know, you know, every two weeks he's you know goes to the doctor. And uh, the last checkups have been very good, very promising. So. Uh, again, we're going to continue to take it, you know, really week by week with him, uh, and make sure that everything heals up and it is done the right way, so we can have him back for summer as well. Rob, uh, could you talk a little about the tight end position? You lost a couple guys in Benson and Leonard, but you you brought in a couple of transfers uh, that that have a good track record. You know, what are you expecting from that group? Yeah, I mean, again. Obviously, we like we like to be in you know to utilize the tight ends. I mean, it's something that you know, it can provide mismatches when, when, when you're playing offensive football. You know, based on what the defense has in the game. Uh, you know, right now those guys are learning, really learning our system, learning what to do, uh, and you know they're gonna get a lot of reps this spring. So, I mean, we're in underwear out there today, so it's, it's hard to tell anything other than <clears throat> you know guys running around and you know getting used to new numbers. I mean, these guys change numbers all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Yeah, somebody asked me, like, well, can you put something out with the new numbers so the fans? I was like, I don't even know them yet. I don't know what the numbers are. They like change. They all want these single digits and everything. And, uh, so they're all, it's all over the place with these numbers. I mean, I'm, I need to have like a roster myself out there, Mike, to help help me you know or put like names on the back of their helmets or something. So. Four, Justin. Just how valuable is it uh, in the spring for the offense with a lot of new players to have a, a returning guy, a quarterback who had so much success and, and brings a lot of experience to the position in Haynes? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you know, it's, it's the most valued position on the field for a reason. I mean, you look at the National Football League, it commands 20% of the salary cap. I mean, it's, it's, that's for a reason. And, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of things he's got to work on, he's got to continue to improve on. Uh, he knows that. He's worked all offseason on those things um, to be the best player that he can possibly be. Uh, but, but the thing that about Haynes that, that you can't uh, you can't go without saying is just his leadership and, and the leadership role that he's really put himself into uh, throughout the season last year, but also through this off season and you know being the leader of the team, um, you know having command, having presence, uh, and, and people believing in him. Um, I, I think I talked about this last year where. You, know, you can't always just you know put all the faith and trust in one single person to, to win football games for you. I mean, it takes it takes everyone's on the field at one time, all eleven on the field on you know in all three phases to go out there. So you know everyone's got to take it personally to be able to elevate their game individually. Uh, you know, for us to improve collectively to be able to win those without having to look at one singular person every time to to go win a game for you. Um, now, if it happens, we're not going to turn it down. But now I've been really pleased with him. Uh, Pleased with just his development as a, like I said, as a leader, but as a, as a young man, and you know, a lot of really good uh, conversations with him over this off season, and uh, just kind of one on one uh, talks, and he really putting himself in a position uh, to be one of the one of the best leaders I've seen at that position. I'm just curious, defensively, you know, without getting into play calls or whatever, kind of what are your expectations? What are you looking for in terms of scheme? Is it going to be similar, just execution? Like, what are the things that you're looking for from Coach Santucci and his staff? Stop the run. Affect the quarterback. Don't let the ball behind you and give up explosives. We do those three things, we'll be a, we'll be a much better uh, football team. Anything more for Coach? Is it too early to start talking goals? I know it's just spring ball right now. Never. This is what we want to accomplish today. Uh, Y'all think I'm crazy when I say that. Uh, I really do. I mean, there, there's, you know, expectations, they just set you up for failure. And, you know, everyone la last year, but everyone asks, well, how many games do you think you're going to win? I'm like, 
well, I mean, you could just easily say, how many games do you think you're going to lose? Like, that's, it's crazy. Uh, you know, now I do take a little note card at the beginning of the year um, after the last scrimmage of, of summer, and I write a number on it, and I put it in an envelope and put it in my desk. That was something I got from uh, years ago from, uh, from Coach O'Leary. And put that in, the, in my desk, and I open it up at the end of the year and, and see. And, um, but as far as expectations to the team, you know, our expectations are to be the absolute best player you can be and improve every single day. Um, you know, when you start putting you know, numerical, statistical expectations uh, on, on a team that's totally different than the previous year, that plays a totally different schedule than the previous year, it, it's really it, it doesn't make sense to me how you can try to compare the two. So, um, you know, internally, do you have wishes and hopes that you want to? reach yeah every single person does but uh you know as we said this morning in our team meeting i mean it's easy to say words it's hard to to show the actions every single day you know to carry out that championship mindset that we want everybody to have can i ask you what your number was on that card last year yeah you can ask anything (laughs) (laughs) i I don't have to tell you (laughs) seven (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, that's something I keep to myself, and um, but it's not for anybody else. It's just, you know, it, it's it's almost a, an evaluation of where I feel the team is, uh, personnel, uh, in relation to other personnel in the, in the league. Um, you know, the 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 grit and toughness that that team has uh, to be able to to overcome. You know, sometimes personnel mismatches um, schematically where we're at as a as, as a uh, offense, defense, and special team. So there's a lot more things that go into that than just predicting really wins. Um, it's, it's as much a evaluation uh, to see where I'm at personally in my evaluation of the team coming out of preseason going into the season. Okay. Kind of a different question, but. You were you had a you were mic'd up and you had a little button you could press to to talk to the team through the speakers. Where did that idea come from? It seems like a great idea for a coach to not blow his voice out. Um, just curious where you got that from. Um, last Thursday, I just thought about it. I mean, you saw. I mean, I've had a microphone before, and sure. like I like to be able to go to a bunch of different all the different drills and individual. I like to be able to you know, especially when you go split fields, be able to be at one spot here and then look over there and see that and. Um, to aid in transitions of where guys are going, or you see, see, see guys that aren't running on the field, right? instead of you know screaming at the top of your lungs and no one really hearing you, uh, you know, the microphone was an easy way to do it. But I mean, like now you got a microphone in your pocket, you got this in your pocket, you got this, and then all of a sudden your, your, your pants are falling down running from drill to drill. So uh, you know, so I figured I just asked for some way we could have a little switch or whatever. And, Put it on there. It, it did. It was, made it a lot, lot easier for me uh, to be able to communicate and, and, and do things without having you know a mic coming out or carrying a microphone around. So I, 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 I liked it. Uh, I think it'll help us as a team uh, improve and be able to give you know direction and, and coaching you know across both fields now. Anything else? That's it. Right, twenty-two minutes and twenty-two seconds. That's it. Go Jackets.